Romans chapter 8, please. Last week, one week ago, we lost a patriarch of purpose. I call him the master teacher of purpose, Dr. Miles Monroe, who was a friend and brother, but also in many regards, a mentor in my life. And I'm sure he's influenced you in some way. And um, I'm going to dedicate this message to him this morning, to his legacy in the earth, and really appreciate all he has meant to us. And in all of that, Jesus Christ will be glorified and magnified. And Jesus said, when you lift me up, I will draw all men unto myself. So our purpose this morning is to lift up the name of Jesus. Can you say amen to that? I got a question for you. What happened to fall? Did we skip autumn? It seems as though we just went right into winter. I woke up and it was winter. And uh, I was telling someone the other day, this has been a long uh, year for me in regards to travel. And I kind of uh, gave this analogy. I feel like a locomotive that is pulled into the depot after traveling about 10,000 miles and there's just steam coming off of the engine. And um, it's just good to be home. It's good to be uh, in the right port and in the right place. And I plan on just resting for a minute. As a matter of fact, I told Pastor D, I said, you better lift your hands and give God praise that I'm even speaking this morning because I really want to lay down. Amen. I had full intention of making me some biscuits and some gravy and drinking coffee and watching all of you guys online. I was going to stream y'all this morning, but uh, the Lord convicted me of that, concerning that, and changed my mind. Let me make this statement before I start. The will of God has little to do with what you have or do not have. The will of God has mostly to do with why you exist. I'm going to say it again. The will of God has little to do concerning what you have or do not have. The will of God has to do with why you exist. You were not sent here to wonder aimlessly through life with no particular point and no certain destiny or destination it is time for the people of god to exit this meandering through life because meandering uh, will embrace mediocrity and you settle for less than what you really can enjoy as god's best for your life so i speak to you an egress that you exit that mere meandering and today that you ingress and you enter and embark upon the greatest thing you could ever understand and that is your purpose in this earth and I speak that over you this morning clarity of thinking receptivity of spirit the narration of your destiny goes forth for the next 45 minutes and you will wholeheartedly grab every word not one word will fall to the ground today in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse number 23. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that that we do not see, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, in the same manner, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Powerful stuff. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the what? The will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image, likeness, similitude of his son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. I'm going to teach this morning a message entitled, Living Effectively in My Now. I need you to look at about four people and say those words, living effectively in my now. Let us pray one more time. Father, I thank you now for the reading of your word. Thank you that your word is like a sword, a sharp sword, dividing both the, the bone and the marrow. Thank you, Lord, that your word is like a hammer that breaks to pieces any heart that would be hardened or calloused by the experiences of life. And I pray, God, an open revelation in this sanctuary today, running its course in each of our minds and hearts. I rebuke every generational spirit. We break every generational curse. And we say, God, have thine own way. Be magnified and glorified in everything that is said and done in Jesus' name. How many of you know that when the people of Israel shouted, the walls of Jericho came down? Now listen, there's some walls that have been erected against your progress today. Put your Bibles down one last time. Put your hands together. And let's shout until those walls come down. Come on, saints. Bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, church. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us, let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Come on, high five two more people and tell them living effectively in my now before you, before you find your seat before you find your seat amen four basic needs of in every person's life is number one identity knowing who you are identity knowing who you are number two is security knowing everything will be all right the second basic need in every person's life is security knowing everything will be all right number three is acceptance knowing you are loved and can I encourage you this morning that you are loved with an unconditional love? Neither things present nor things to come. No demon, no principality, no power can remove you from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Number four is purpose. Knowing why you are here. Knowing why you are here. As I was preparing this particular message for you this morning, I got excited about the enhancement of your destiny concerning the words you will hear today. And I dare submit to you, many of you are going to trot through this week and not walk. Many of you are going to run through this week and not walk. Some of you are going to fly through this week and not walk. This is going to give you energy today. Amen. This is an effectual word. So when I was pinning this particular message, this thought came to my mind that there's a determination that must be made. Instead of trying to figure my destiny out. It is time for us to start figuring ourselves into our destiny. You must figure into your destiny. It will frustrate you trying to figure your destiny out. Because you will think things are supposed to happen that didn't happen. And it will confuse you concerning your true cause and existence in the earth. This equates to what I call the process of discovery. The process of discovery. One aspect of the process of discovery is this thought. The philosophy of possibility. The philosophy of possibility. In the philosophy of possibility, there is what is referred to as the calculating self and the central self. The calculating self says, I am in Florida. It is raining right now, and I am irritated. Not because it's raining, that's good for the citrus crops, but because I'm on vacation here. 
The central self says, I'm on vacation in Florida. It's raining and it's helping the harvest. What can I do with where I am at? Are y'all with me right now? What can I do with where I am at? You get in trouble when you start saying things like, this is the way it should be. I'm going to say it again. You get in trouble when you start saying things like, this is the way things should be. You release yourself to possibility when you say, this is the way things are. And where can I go from this situation? In other words, you do not allow the situation to determine your attitude. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You do not let the circumstances determine your central or core existence. Never allow things you cannot change to change you. Can you say amen to that? You must put your feet down and say, God is in control at all times. I'm going to give you some keys here. Number one, you must recognize present. Present. Recognize present. Your future is where you're going, but you've not been there. It's a time yet to come. It's an expectation of advancement. But future also has to do with progressive development. Therefore, I really appreciate the definition that Dr. Monroe gave future. He said future is not in front of you. Future is inside of you. Future is not in front of you. It's inside of you. I appreciate that. When you talk about the word present, everyone say living effectively in my now. When you talk about the word present, the word present has to do with a time that is associated with events that you perceive directly, apparently. It's not a recollection. Your recollection is your past. Your speculation is your future. But your present is your now. Present, also defined as gift. If we could ever get the people of God to realize the moment you are living in is your gift from God. If you can just realize for a moment, God gave me where I am right now. I could not be here if it was not for his grace. So your now is your gift. You should treat it like a gift. Your now not only says where you are and when you are, but more importantly, it says who you are and why you are. Your now says who you are and why you are. Your now. It is your, your present is your pre-sent. Pre-sent. Hmm. God knew you would be where you are before you got there. It is called predestination, predestined, before standing, the ability to stand in any situation, predestinated by God. So your present is your pre-sent, preordained position in the earth. You can't be anywhere in the earth at any time that God did not know you would be there before you got there. That's why you need him. Can you say amen to that? So your present is your presentation of your purpose. Whew. You don't really know if people are living in their purpose until you see the expression of their experience. I'm going to say it again. You don't really know if people are living in their purpose purpose until you see the expression of their experience in other words when you start fussing and grumbling and complaining God says you've not learned the power of your existence in that experience yet because if you did you would be extracting everything from the moment including the bad good and the ugly to make it better for your future I'm not leaving here and not learning something 
Y'all talk to me. Talk to me. So no matter where you are, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that you give thanks in everything. So you lose it all. You lift your hands and give him thanks. Things falling apart, you lift your hands and give. That's the will of God. And you can tell a, per a person is connected to purpose when pain is all around them and problems are all around them, but they keep their praise high and their problem low. That is the existence of the presentation of my purpose right now. In other words, don't wait till it gets better to give him praise because I have to wonder if you really value the experience. I'm going to tell you again, don't wait till it gets better before you give him praise. Praise him in the midst of the problem. If you don't, I have to wonder if you valued the experience you've been through. Because until you learn the value of your experience, get ready for another journey right through the middle of it. So how do we handle our present? Is this good for you? How do we handle our now, our present position? Everyone say these words with me. It is what it is. Now, you need to look about three people. Some of y'all look right at your spouse when I said that. Say it again. It is what it is. How do you handle your present position? Number one, assess. Assess it. Estimate the nature of it but also evaluate the quality of it. Do not just estimate the nature, but evaluate the quality of your moment, the significance of your present. Always know that where you are in life is very significant. Who going to teach, Bishop? Always know that where you are is very significant. Determine the importance of your situation. Determine the importance of your situation. Stop asking, how did I get here? And start asking, why am I here? Too many people want to know, how did I get here? Stop saying that. Start saying, why am I here right now? And learn to make the most of every opportunity. Someone once said, I made my own assessment of my life and I began to live it. And that's what I call freedom. Whew, that's powerful stuff. I made my own assessment of my life and I began to live it. That is what I call freedom. Never allow your problem to build a prison around you that you feel like you cannot produce, that you cannot be the person that God called you to be. Those bars are only defining who you are becoming. Whew, Lord have mercy. I'm thinking right now, and I, I better be careful because I wanted to teach this morning. I didn't want to preach, and that's a very difficult task for me because I love to preach. I love to shout and buck and kick and dance. So you got two things working for you this morning in regards to me teaching. Number one, I don't feel that good. And then number two, I wanted to teach to begin with. So those two things working together will help me stay calm. I'm thinking right now that when I assess a situation, I have to determine, am I done or is this a new beginning? I'm reminded of the four lepers sitting in the gate in the book of Kings. I think it is, yes, yeah, 2 Kings chapter 7. And w watch what they said. Why sit we here till we die? Do something. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Doing something, even if it's wrong, is better than doing nothing and sitting there dying. I'm reminded also in, in um, the Gospels where there are those lepers that are in that multitude and one steps out and says, will you cleanse me? Whew. How do you know that your one move can pull a whole lineage after you, a whole generation. Okay, so everybody in your family was like this, and you made an exit. Until you make the exit, nobody else knows the path. You don't have to be broke down living. All right, stop. Stop, Bishop. Number one, assess it. Number two, accept it. It's believable. Admit it. 
Here's the problem with Christians today. We do not admit where we really are. Honesty is a virtue. Honesty is a virtue. One of the greatest prayers ever prayed in the Bible was by Jehoshaphat. When he looked at God and he said, Lord, I got people, Mount Seir, people in front of me, um, the, the Edomites, the Moabites, everybody around me. And he threw his hands up. He looked at God and he said, and I don't know what to do. When's the last time you prayed like that? When you said, Lord, I do not know what to do. I, I really believe this. I believe God gets us in some situations just for us to be honest. And quit saying that it's some other way when it's really, it is what it is. And until you learn to lift your hands and really be honest with God. I've been there a million times. I think I was there last week. Lord, I don't know what to do. Whew. And you know what? Can I give a testimony? In that particular situation, without giving you the details, you still give God glory. You don't need the details of my testimony for you to give God glory for my story. So I was in a situation I needed God to give me a breakthrough. Suddenly I got a phone call from the most unlikely person in the world and said, I'm going to relieve you of this. Now that's all the testimony I need to give you. But when I got that call, I had just prayed, God, I don't know what to do. 30 minutes later, the phone call came in and said, I'm going to relieve you of this situation. What do you think I did? I set my cell phone down on my desk. I got behind my desk. I did a little jig, lift my hands. I said, God, I want to thank you that when we do not know what to do, you send an answer every time. All he wants you to do is say, I don't know what to do right now. Everyone say, accept it. Amen. Paul said, I've learned to be a base and I've learned to abound. I've had everything I ever wanted. And there have been times in my life when I had nothing that I wanted. And you know what he said? I've learned to be content in every situation I found myself in. When I started thinking about that, I kind of did this play on words in my own mind. This is when I was driving from California. I was thinking about that passage of scripture. And he said, I've learned to be content in every situation I'm in. I've learned to be a base. I've learned to be a bound. In every situation, I'm content. Here's, I thought this, content. I still have content when I don't have material possession. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? I still have content in my life, even when my bank account says minus. All right, leave it there. Number one is assess. Number two is accept. Number three is accomplish something. Accomplish something in your now. It means to carry out a task. There's no task in the kingdom that is too menial to your matter. Did you hear what I said? There's no task in the kingdom that is too menial for your matter. Every task counts. It's when you stop achieving and you stop accomplishing that the momentum of your matter becomes halted or restricted. Whew. Paul is in Mars waiting for something to happen. And while he's there, he's being effective for the kingdom. Whew. How do you know that God has not isolated your life in a moment of time called now for you to be effective to some people right in that vicinity of your present situation? And he's testing you in that little area before he can allow you to be trusted in this big area. Some of us are waiting for it to be big and we ain't done nothing when it was little. You feel like you need a, a platform before you can be effective. Don't fool yourself. Accomplish something. Carry out a task. C.S. Lewis said it like this. The only people who accomplish much are those who want knowledge so badly that they seek it while the conditions are still favorable. Watch what he said. Favorable conditions may never come. Choose to accomplish something where you are. Theodore Roosevelt said these words, do what you can with what you have where you are. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Everyone say respect your purpose. 
You are disrespecting your destiny and your purpose when you stop doing anything because of the situation you find yourself in. I don't care what has happened. It does not matter what you've lost and how much pain you have endured. Your purpose is a vital part of your life. It breathes on achievement and accomplishment. Are y'all with me right now? When you take the why out of your existence, you're just taking up air. You're just eating at the table. You are here and you are where you are right now. Mordecai, I told Esther, you are here for such a time as this. I know there ain't nothing happening right now. But girl, I watch you every time you put your makeup on. I watch you every time you get in the mirror. And you better not forget that you were born for such a time as this. Watch what he said. And if you don't pay attention to your present situation, relief and deliverance will arise from another place. In other words, every time you say no to your purpose, God's got somebody else in position to accomplish that why in this earth and that's why you are here and you've got to rise up and say there ain't nobody standing in my shoes ain't nobody taking my place nudge your neighbor and ask them how does it feel to sit by somebody this important why do you think the devil fights you like he fights you because he knows you are significantly strategic to the plan of God in the earth. He wants to discourage you, depress you, cause you to be despondent. But Bishop came by to tell you that the devil is a lie and everybody else is speaking in your life to tell you you were not born for a reason in this earth. Everyone say respect your purpose. Well, let me finish this. Acts 13, 36 for David. After he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid with his fathers. The NIV says, for David served the purpose of God in his generation. Served means to be subor subordinate. Served. He served. He was subordinate to his purpose. He let purpose make decisions for him. He did not make decisions for his purpose. In other words, if you're not included in my why, I can ignore you. If you do not serve my purpose in the earth, then I cannot be associated in agreement with you because how can two walk together except they be agreed? Quit marrying partners that have nothing to do with your purpose. Single people. Talk in the building, Bishop. I know you don't feel good, man, but tell them anyway. I think I will. You better find somebody that agrees with your purpose in the earth because both of you have got to submit to that. All right. Whew. David said in 1 Samuel 17, Eliab said, what are you doing here? Watch what David says. Is there not a cause? And he turned from him. Obviously, you're not a partner to my purpose. What are you doing here? And David turned from him. He didn't even speak to him. He says, they're not a cause and turn from him. I'm not conversing with you about my existence. I don't need your endorsement for me to operate in my purpose. Y'all need to quit looking for people to pat you on the back. You little 10 people, oh, you so anointed. You better know you anointed when there ain't nobody patting you on the back. Talk in the building, Bishop. See, purpose creates opportunity, but it also expects opposition. Hmm. This dude is on a mission just to bring cheese and bread to his brothers, Pastor Herman. He's just on a mission to bring cheese and bread to his brothers. Menial task and run up on great opportunity. Why? Because he was doing the purpose of what his father sent him to do. Cheese and bread turned into a giant. He was doing something so menial, just doing what his father said. And when he was obedient to what his father said, he ran up on great opportunity. You never know when your cheese and bread turns into a giant. Hmm. 
Let me tell you something. When you get an opportunity, ask questions. What will be done? In other words, never operate through opposition. In other words, never face opposition with your purpose and do not expect prosperity on the other side. I'm going to say that again. David's a smart little dude. He says, listen, why are you here? He turned away from him. Next question out of David's mouth, what will be done? He said, number one, is there not a cause? Number two, what will be done for the dude that kills this giant? Every problem you face is an opportunity for prosperity in your life. And I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about your life being better than it is right now. And you know what they said, right? They say, whoever kills this giant gets the daughter and money. I can hear David right now. What's the girl look like? Bring her out here. Let me see her one good time. He wanted to know if what he is getting was worth the reward of what he was about to fight. Y'all better hear me. You better start choosing your fights. If the fight doesn't have to do with your purpose, walk away. But if you're going to fight me over my existence, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to come out with something on the other side. Because your war precedes your wealth. Talk in the building, Bishop. Purpose expects opposition. Watch what Eliab said. Why did you come here? That's the enemy. He asking you that today. Why did you come here? Many of you only see yourself as being born from your mama's womb. You were not born. You were sent. Okay, as long as you can just accept that you're born, there's no incentive in you. There's no ambition in you. There's no drive in you. There's no desire in you. You're just one of those people that want to take up space. But when you realize you're an ambassador sent from the Father into the earth to make a difference, then you say, I expect somebody to fight me because I arrived in my purpose in this earth. Are y'all here right now? Amen. Now watch what he says. He said, David, why did you come here? And I'm going to tell you all this. It's good to answer penetrating questions. It forces you to go on a quest for your existence. Whew, that's powerful. Here's the problem, I believe. We don't like, we don't like challenges. We don't like confrontation. And really, those things cause us to examine everything about our existence in this earth. Watch what he, start, he starts on him. First, he gets angry with David. Watch what he says. Why are you here? And then he says, what did you do with those few sheep? He made fun of his role at home. Good Lord have mercy. Be careful when the enemy starts minimizing you to your home. Just like, you ain't, you ain't about kingdom, you about yourself. Then he said, I know the naughtiness of your home. I know you. The second way the enemy will try to eliminate you from your purpose in the earth is when he starts reminding you of your moral acts. Your acts are not your ways. That went over your head. Because you did a thing does not mean that's who you are. Your acts and your ways are two different things. You did that and that was an action, but that is not who you are defined as in the earth. Y'all, okay, you know what? Y'all act yourself right just on me. I'm going to have to look at y'all. Who am I talking to? You ain't fooling me, honey. So he says, I know the naughtiness of who you are. I know you behind the scenes. Many people will bring up your past to remind you you don't have a future. I know, but, but he's anointed. Yeah, but I know him. He's really called by God. Yeah, but I know things you don't know. When you hear that about a man or woman or God or one of your friends, just, say, just look at them and say, do I look like a trash can? And when it gets back to you, just laugh and say that happens all the time. Watch what he said. You came to see the battle. You a spectator. You're not a participant. Whew. You are in the stands. You're not on the field. The enemy will always tell you you're not really involved. You're not that important. You bought a ticket to watch the show. You need to tell the devil, no, I'm on the screen, baby. You have highly underestimated my value in this program. Okay, I got to hurry, y'all. 
purpose always carries an expected outcome. Watch what David said to Goliath. This day the Lord's going to deliver you into my hand. Why? Because I asked one question. Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason for me being here? Purpose always carries an expected outcome. You will win. You will win when you get the revelation of why. Until you know why you are here, every intimidating voice will talk you out of your purpose in this earth. You've got to say today you are going down. Why are you going down? Because I showed up. Watch. In other words, there's a curse in your family, your generations, your genealogy of whatever, diabetes, alcoholism, whatever you want to say. But you showed up. And you look at that thing that has dominated your family for hundreds of years. And you say, I was not born into this genealogy. I was sent to this genealogy. And that spirit that has cycled itself down to me stops with me. And anybody after me is not going to have to deal with this because of me. That's understanding purpose in the earth. Somebody shout hallelujah. And here's the fringe benefit, and I'm done. And we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are thee called according to his purpose. But verse 26 and 27 tells you why. Because the spirit itself helpeth you with your infirmities. Here's the power of a purposeful person. They have a secret agent working inside of them. When we do not know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit itself makes intercession for us according to the purpose. Even when you don't know how to pray, because you're purposeful in your life, the Holy Ghost kicks in inside of you and helps you make discerning decisions that have to do with the pivotal point of your destiny. In other words, when the spirit kicks in, it's your secret agent. The spirit kicks in and says, I know you're confused, baby, but I got you. I know you don't know what to do, but when you wasn't praying with your mouth, your spirit was already praying. You just driving, listening to Maroon 5, and the spirit kicks in and starts interceding for you. You driving, thinking about the sons of anarchy, and the Spirit is making intercession for you. You driving, you ain't even thinking about purpose, and the Spirit kicks in and says you got to get back on the path of your purpose. And I came by to tell you God will haunt you, God will taunt you, God will bother you, make your bed in hell, and he will show up there and remind you you have got to get back to your purpose in this earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done where? On earth as it already is in heaven. It's only one way for that to happen. The Spirit knows the deep things of God. The Spirit knows what's going on in heaven when you don't know what's going on in earth. And the Spirit starts making intercession that the strategy of heaven starts being activated. And some of you get uncomfortable and bothered, but you don't know it's the Holy Ghost pushing you right back into your purpose till you get a Full resolve. I will not move until my purpose is complete in this earth. I want you to jump on your feet. Give God praise for being a man or woman of purpose today. Come on, saints. Bless him. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, I know I've been teaching you today. But let's take a few moments and give him praise that you are still in the house of God. Bless your name, Jesus. Many are the plans of a man's heart. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Proverbs 19, 21. This is out of my notes. Just follow this. <clears throat> Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans of a man's heart. <clears throat> but it's God's purpose that prevails. 
plans, vices, contrivances, manipulations, fabrications. Many are the fabrications, manipulations, contrivances, vices of a man's heart. In other words, when we don't see it happening like we think it ought to happen, we kick in and manipulate things to make it look like this is God. It ain't God at all. We start fabricating situations. Abraham ain't working with Sarah, so he brings in Hagar. That's a contrivance. So that he can give birth to the son of promise that God talked to him about a long time ago. He carried that purpose in his heart. When the purpose didn't happen, when he thought it ought to happen, he brought in a substitute. Be careful with your substitutes. He brought in a substitute to manipulate the plan. And the Bible says, but the purpose of God will prevail. In other words, you can do what you want to do, but I'm going to do what I said I was going to do, and I'm going to do it through you. Now, you can delay it. Y'all ain't hear me. You can delay it. You can slow it down, but you can't stop it. Because I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do because it's my counsel. He's a wonderful counselor. Look at the word counselor. It literally means purposeful one counselor. I'm a wonderful counselor to console and give direction. If he's a wonderful counselor, then he don't leave you when you make stupid decisions. And start creating vices and contrivances and manipulation. He'd let you do all that. Go ahead. Have Ishmael. Wild donkey of a man, he's going to give you hell. You created him, you deal with him. But I'm going to keep coming back until you do what I said to do. And Isaac has to come out of you. Because Isaac is the promise. Ishmael is your substitute. Woo. Many other vices, but the purpose of God will prevail. And I speak prevailing purpose over your life. Prevailing purpose over every life in this building. That no matter what you're creating in your own mind's eye, that God's plan will overwhelm any plan you have made for yourself and when you get that revelation you never settle for an alternative you know what I rebuke that in the name of Jesus I rebuke your alternative I rebuke that in Jesus name you never settle for an alternative once you have the real revelation in the name of the Lord if this is your word run to the altar right now come quickly we've got to do two things real fast here Come on, if this is your word, get here quickly, quickly, quickly. I got to pray over you. Seal this. I got to seal this in the spirit. 